Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Then come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. It is Monday, October the 7th. We are, uh, our devotions are coming from the Bible Promise Book Devotional for Women. And today is a somber anniversary. It marks the one year anniversary of the attack on Israel last year. And many hostages uh, have still not been recovered and unfortunately may, may likely be dead. We're praying for wisdom and for peace to come in that situation. Wisdom for the people who are acting and defending and peace and comfort for the families who are still awaiting the return of their loved ones. So we are beginning week 41 week 41 and our focus for week 41 is protection our uh, devotion today is entitled a mighty protector and our scripture comes from the book of psalm chapter 31 verse 3 out of the new king james and it reads for you are my rock and my fortress therefore for your name's sake lead me and guide me all right let's get into this when you need protection from life's storms, you can always find safety in the one who is the rock and fortress. Throughout the scriptures, you'll find several references to God as my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my shield, my stronghold, and my salvation. He is a mighty protector. For starters, check out these verses. Now, these, my rock, fortress, deliverer, shield, those are all scriptures that I invoke when I'm putting on my armor in the morning, especially the shield of faith. Okay. All right. Let's hear what some of these are. You might want to get a pen or pencil and write them down. Anything that is going to encourage and lift and enrich my life and my connection with the Lord, I will do it. So Psalm 18, verse two out of the New Living Translation, and it looks like one, two, th the first three verses are from the New Living Translation, and the last verse given here is out of the New King James. All right, so Psalm 18, 2, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my Savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and my place of safety. These are good things to write down and remind yourself of these things when you feel in danger, when you feel attacks coming upon you, you speak these words, Lord, you said that you are my rock, my fortress, my savior in whom I find protection and then thank him for his protection. You're my shield and the power that saves me and my place of safety. Okay. In Psalm 62 verse two, he alone is my rock and my salvatress, my salvation, my fortress where I will never be shaken. My, my brain was getting ahead of my words as I was reading ahead. So he alone is my rock and salvation, my fortress where I will never be shaken. Psalm 94, 22, again out of the New Living Translation. But the Lord is my fortress. My God is the mighty rock where I hide. These are all good. And then our last verse uh, out of the New King James Version, it reads at 2 Samuel 22, verse 2, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. I love it. Reach out to God. Seek refuge in the one who waits ready to rescue you, no matter how strong, how confident, how secure in faith you are. You can never do any better than to give yourself over to God, who will help you safely navigate through life's storms today and for all time. And I think completely appropriate that we're still um, praying for the people who have just endured a horrible storm in North Carolina and Tennessee and Georgia and other areas that have been impacted. Uh, East Tennessee and West North Carolina um, have been the hardest hit. And we are praying for the Lord to remind the people, you know, this is a very thing that'll bring comfort in situations like that. We may not know how God is going to do it, but he will because he's faithful to his word. Okay. And um, let's pray. 
continue to lift up the people that, of the areas that have been the hardest hit. God loves us. And this right here are words that we can depend on. Doesn't mean bad things are not going to happen. Remember Psalm 91, I guess it's verse 15, says he will be with us in trouble. So we're going to go through some stuff, but he's with us. And when he is with us and he is for us, who can be against us? Who can defeat us? Nobody. Because God makes a way where there seems to be no way. He is the one in Romans 8, 28. He works all things together for our good. Although loss is never anything anybody ever wants to endure, it happens to everyone. The loss of property, the loss of loved ones, the loss of jobs, it happens to everyone. Loss of finances, it happens to everyone. We have God on our side and he knows how to do things we can't. What's impossible for us is possible with him. So no matter how dire it looks, you're not alone. God is with you. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you right now, oh God, for your word. I thank you that you are our protection, our shield, our deliverer. You are our ever-present help in our time of trouble. Help us, Lord, to remember these words and to know that this is your nature. It is your nature. It is your desire, Father God, to provide us with help and protection. We thank you, Father, that you are our rock, and we know that we can lean on you no matter what's going on. And we know, Father, that when we stand on you, you hold us fast. We trust you, we count on you, and we you because you will never change. Help us to know that deep within. And for those who are struggling with this trust because of disappointments in their life, because, Father God, things have happened and they felt completely abandoned, by you, Father. We know that's a lie from the devil. You've never abandoned us. Rebuild that faith so they can trust you with all that concerns them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. If you haven't already, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back and check out some of the other content I have on my channel. Um, I wanted to bring up today because I've seen that they're still doing the, the rescuing and there's people I'm going to be reaching out to today to see if I can get a hold of them. Many nonprofit organizations and two in particular that I've already seen are making good progress in reaching the people of North Carolina that are isolated. And this is also a good point of prayer for you today. From everything I've heard, what they need most are helicopters that can fly in. So we're praying for the Lord to move upon the hearts of people who own or have access to the use of helicopters, that they will be moved by the Holy Spirit to donate the time, the gasoline, the pilot hours, whatever it is their time for, to go in and help to drop food or to, to deliver food, to deliver help to the people that are in the most isolated areas because of the roads that have washed away, to sustain life, to bring hope to these people, water, food, uh, I mean, uh, two organizations in particular that I've heard of. First, Operation Blessing. I used to work at CBN for over 21 years. Operation Blessing is part of that organization of ministries. And they have been delivering water filtration systems so the people can access the water near their homes. It'll filter out dirt and toxins and bacteria and anything there so that they have clean water. They're delivering those things I know that um, they're delivering um, formula, emergency food packets, and, and things like that, emergency help like that. Samaritan's Purse is doing the same thing. And you can go to operationblessing.org or ob.org if you want to see what they're doing. And there's also a place there for you to donate. If you wish to donate funds to organizations that are doing good things, OB is highly trusted. And they do what they say they're going to do. I worked in that organization for 21 years. They always rank very high on those navigator, charity navigator websites and things like that for domestic. And then the other is Samaritan's Purse. They have set up oxygen tents for people who need oxygen, for people to go in and get their oxygen treatments or whatever. They're also bringing food and supplies and waters and all this 
all these things. Both organizations I've seen are doing good. And of course, theirs is SamaritansPurse.org. And Samaritan is S-A-M-A-R-I-T-A-N-P-U-R-S-E dot org. Both of those organizations, there's probably others that are doing things. But right now, because of the financial malfeasance com uh, committed by uh, the current administration in charge in the United States, it's unfortunate. Um, they have mishandled the FEMA funds. And that was openly admitted in a press conference by Kareem Jean-Pierre in 2022 that they took FEMA funds and have acquired them. Uh, what's the right word I'm saying? They have basically taken them from FEMA to use them to provide housing and food and emergency medical help and everything else to illegal immigrants. And that of millions upon millions upon millions of dollars from FEMA that should have been available for this disaster, they've been bilking it out of the FEMA funds to help illegal immigrants. And that was in a press conference, I believe it was September 19th of 2022. And uh, I just don't, Lord, you know what to do about this to make this right. So go to your nonprofit organizations that are doing these things. The two that I trust the most are the two that I mentioned. Clean water, they're doing everything they can to bring help and provision. And also, Lord, I just pray protection for first responders and citizens who are hearing the cry for help and rising up to provide help. I pray there be no hindrance or no stopping of these humanitarian um, uh, actions these people are taking, giving of their own time and energy and resources to bring help to the people that have been hardest hit by this storm. And we do pray you take the wind out of Hurricane Milton that has begun to form and that no more damage will be done in this area by this storm. We thank you, Father, for staving off that storm in the name of Jesus. Amen. All we can do is pray. That's the biggest weapon. We know what to do. God knows what to do, and he is going to restore righteousness to the United States of America. He's continuing to expose, expose, expose. And he told me that I need to expose. This was back in, on November the 4th, 2020, the morning after the election. He said, I need to expose so that I can dispose. That was his word to me. I said, okay, Lord, I didn't think it would take this long for exposure to happen, but I guess there's a lot of stuff that needs to be exposed. So, Lord, I thank you for what you're doing to expose so that wickedness and evil can be disposed and that righteousness will be restored. The covenant you made that our founders made with you, Lord, will be honored and will continue. And Lord, we thank you for blessing America. We thank you, oh God, for all the blessings you pour out upon us in Jesus name. God bless you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye until next time.